Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and quick review of the Nextbox T11 Mini Windows 10 PC. This one retails on Amazon for around 150 bucks, and there's also a very similar Ace PC T11 that has the exact same design, same RAM, same memory configuration, only has a slightly faster processor, which is the Z8350. This one has the Z8300, uh, which means the clock speed is up to 1.83 gigahertz versus 1.92 gigahertz. So other than that, fairly small difference. Everything's the same from the design to the number of ports. Uh, and the Ace PC T11 sells for 167 bucks. Regardless of what version you get, you you're getting a mini PC with 4GB of built-in RAM and 32GB of built-in flash storage. Part of that memory is occupied by the Windows 10 operating system. Now for a 4GB mini Windows PC, this is currently the best value that you can find on Amazon. Competing models by other manufacturers will set you back for about 180 bucks up to 200 depending on where you look with the same memory configuration. So this is definitely one of the best values if you're looking for a low-cost Windows mini PC. The benefits of Windows versus an Android uh, mini TV box is that it's going to be able to run all of the legacy applications for productivity and work that you simply can't get on mobile versions currently in the Play Store. It's also more powerful, so if you're using it again for multimedia or even for productivity, it's going to be the better choice. Other specifications of the T11 series is that it's fanless, just like other mini PC boxes, so it doesn't produce any noise. It's also very energy efficient, again using the Intel Atom X5 series, which is the Cherry Trail series, the latest generation of chips by Intel. It supports 4K resolution output and also features an interesting 2.5 inch HHD slot or a SATA slot on the back behind this plastic door, which allows you to pop in your own SSD or hard drive to really expand and on memory of the computer as a whole. It can also be mounted onto the back of a monitor, a television, or onto a wall if you want it in a more permanent setup, and overall it's very compact and small as you can see here. So otherwise it does have dual band Wi-Fi, it comes with Bluetooth on board as well, but those are most of the basic specs that uh, are covered. Taking a closer look at the build here, we have an interesting tapered edge at the bottom here that's used for ventilation purposes. There's an LED slash microphone on the front. The side here houses one USB 3.0 port, a second USB 2.0 port, and a micro USB port for expanding on built-in memory. The back features a VGA port for connecting to older monitors, a 3.5mm port for connecting to external speakers or headphones, Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, a full HDMI port for connecting to modern HD televisions and monitors, a micro USB OTG port, so this supports things like keyboards and uh, other on-the-go accessories that you may have already for a flagship Android phone. There's also the proprietary DC port for power. There's no built-in battery since this is essentially a desktop replacement, so it needs to be plugged in at all times. Dedicated power on off switch is a little recessed, but overall it feels tactile and responsive. And there are two more full size USB 2.0 ports on the side for a combined total of four USB ports for connecting to accessories, peripherals, and extending the memory by form of hard drive, for instance. Overall, the design I feel like is fairly elegant and classy, and uh, as a whole, it remains again very pocketable and petite. Easy to carry with you with its tapered edges, and uh, as a whole, definitely shows how far computing power has evolved the years because. It's amazing to think how the power of a desktop can now be squished into something that's essentially just a small cube. And for most people, this is all you need because it runs YouTube, Netflix, Hulu just fine. We'll show you that later on in the software section. And of course, it can also handle Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Chrome browsing without any issues at all. So quite amazing, even though it's running on Intel Atom, which has already been significantly improved through the years now that it's on the Cherry Trail variant. So let's skip over to the software side of things next. A clean boot will take roughly 20 seconds to complete and afterwards it's going to proceed you through the setup screen uh, you know for the first time and if we just click on next here it's just going to have to take a few more seconds to initiate and then go through all the uh, settings and then we'll launch back into the regular Windows screen. 
So when you first, uh, again, power it on, it's just like any Windows 10 computer. You can log into your Wi-Fi information, you can set up your region uh, and agree to recommended settings, stuff like that. You can also enter BIOS on the mini PC by pressing the escape key after plugging in a USB-based keyboard. Uh, of course, it also supports USB mice, which is what we're doing right now. We're connected to a mouse. Uh, that's just because, again, there's no way to control it since there isn't a built-in remote uh, by default. And indeed, we're now booted into the Windows screen. We're going to switch over to a screencast later just to make the resolution a little bit better. Right now we're using a projector, so some things seem a little bit uh, fuzzy, but you can see that we are ha a grid to the, again, legacy Windows desktop, and you can see there are no applications pre-included, so there's no bloatware on here. You won't find any Microsoft Office, anything like that. If you want to use Chrome, you have to install it yourself. You just get the essentials like the Microsoft Edge browser, which is, again, the more optimized version of Internet Explorer. There is Cortana on here. You can set up Windows Hello to unlock it by facial recognition or fingerprint if you add those essentials yourself. And again, you have just a standard time and date info on the side, multitasking, calendar, stuff like that. You can see that it's fairly responsive. Time and date is going to be synced with the internet automatically, so no complaints there. Volume adjustments. There aren't any built-in speakers to the mini PC box, but again, you can connect your own speakers and listen to sound that way. You can see that the Bluetooth mode is also on here, so you can connect to wireless essentials as well. Cortana bar is right on the side here. I can tap on the Internet Explorer icon to go into a full list view of all my apps and a tile interface more similar to uh, Windows 8. These are all recommended apps, so things that you may find from the Microsoft Store, but they are not pre-included or pre-installed by default. You just have, again, the essentials, things like a notepad, things like Microsoft Paint, uh, you know, calendar, clock, and that's basically it. So there's not too much stuff going on. So open up the file manager, we can see a bit more info in terms of how it's partitioned. You have access to the standard images, music, videos, uh, which are all blank and uh, no documents installed. But in terms of memory, we can see that uh, we do have the majority of the 32 gigs, which is still available. Uh, but again, it is a little bit limited in terms of built-in memory. You have, again, roughly uh, 9 gigs taken up by the operating system, which is expected since it's a full desktop OS. Uh, but that means if you're installing really intensive apps, things like Photoshop that requires a ton of memory, then that's something to be careful of. So we can see that again, Windows is fully activated and the product key is there. And indeed we have access to four gigabytes of uh, RAM uh, on board, you can see there. So uh, everything seems to be fairly true as far as the specs. And you can see that general navigation between basic tasks like just the file manager is pretty swift and responsive. Uh, no real delay. I have multiple tabs open. I'm not encountering any lag. Uh, it does get a little bit slower if if I'm browsing the web, however, I installed Chrome, uh, kind of the first thing I did, just because I tried using Edge and Internet Explorer, and of course it's not really optimized to be used with things like YouTube, since that's, since that's a Google service, but uh, the speed was just quite slow and, and uh, sluggish. So if we want to just find a video and then maybe click on it, you'll notice that there is definitely a delay. Uh, you know, it's been tapped on, there's that uh, kind of thinking bar, and then it loads after about, you know, 20 seconds or so. The buffering time itself is actually quite swift, as you can see there. Once a page does load, everything you know works without any issues, and you can skip the ads, read comments, stuff like that, and you can see there's very little waiting time between uh, when you want to scroll on a page and when content will show up. So no real complaints there. As you open up more tabs, it still seems to handle things relatively well. I experimented with roughly five to seven tabs open. Performance remained fairly stable. I guess that's due to the four gigs of RAM, which is more than uh, really required for such a light version of uh, you know, Windows 10. But uh, just to know that it's not instantaneous, like you may find on an Intel Core i5 or i7 computer, which is again expected on a model that is uh, a lot less expensive. And for the most part, again, streaming video can be done up to full 4K without any problems at all, and uh, no real complaints you know, in the mo most part as far as watching back media. But again, there will be some moments of hesitation just to be aware of that. Uh, if you are transitioning between apps, you know, if you're closing them up uh, or you know, launching them for the first time, there is going to be some hesitation that you'll, you'll notice. Uh, but all in all, performance seems to be rather stable and uh, coherent. Windows 10 on this is fully uh, activated, so it seems like uh, you know, I don't have to install any keys or whatever, so it has been fully launched with you know, a regular 
version of Windows without any problems, so that's good to note. And from there, I can install all the apps that I want to from Office or just using Google Apps uh, for Word uh, or Google Documents, stuff like that. Works without any problems. You can install your own webcam if you want to video chat since there isn't one kind of pre installed. So that's pretty much it as far as the uh, quick hands on review of the uh, Acebox T11 series uh, or the Nextbox T11 series of uh, Windows 10 PC. And uh, I would say it's a fairly good value if you're looking for a mini TV box plugged into your television set just for streaming video or for you know downloading the occasional app. I wouldn't say it's a great choice for things like Photoshop for extensive gaming just because the processor still isn't quite powerful enough to handle those those tasks. Uh, you'll notice some moments of sluggishness here and there. Uh, you know if you have too many programs open in the background, since at the end of the day it's still meant as a budget computer. However, it uh, works without too many problems, and for the casual user, I think that they'll be pleased with uh, the overall feel and the performance of the unit. Uh, during operation, it also remains fairly cool in temperature, so it doesn't really overheat, uh, which is always good to know. So that's pretty much it as far as our hands-on review of the uh, Nextbox T11 or the T11 series of the Windows 10 mini PCs, and you can check back for an article with some more details on performance and benchmarks soon. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.